they really have to put out, Greggy, to get into that 90 category or above. The other night we had one, uh, Bo Aka in the sixth race, who also, he carried about, uh, let's see, he carried right. five pounds more, no, no one, he, one, he carried two pounds more than anybody else in the race. Now that was one, uh, there was a mistake and there was 131, Greggy, that, yeah. that, that is the most weight that Larry Wyman, who is the racing right. secretary and a handicapper, has put on this horse. Now, he won this race, which means that when he comes back again, if the owners are going to race him again, he is going to have to carry as much weight, if not more. Right. And uh, that's quite an accomplishment. I would say that the 131 and quarter horses, you could uh, uh, talk about Kelso or Forgo uh, carrying a 138 or 140 pounds. This is a lot of weight for a quarter horse to carry. And he did uh, his time of... Uh at 300 yards of 15.54, right. that achieved 100 on the speed index. That is right. That and, is absolutely right. Uh, that's the right. standard that you guys have to measure from there. All uh, right. And uh, if I could have made a bet that particular night, I knew he was going to break the track record because of the caliber. And uh, he was actually uh, racing at the shorter, uh, shorter distance. And the horse that had this distance before was just a, an average horse. And I knew that Boaca, who, by the way, uh, he holds two track records now, and uh, we're going to have a, something toward the end of the season. He definitely would be right now in line as the horse of the year at Suffolk Meadows. Remember the name Boaca. A funny story about this horse, he came from Blue Ribbon Downs, which is a track in Salisaw, Oklahoma. I'm starting to talk like yeah. these <laughs> folks, you know, down Texas, got a twang now? New Mexico, Salisaw, Oklahoma. Uh, this horse was a $3,500 horse down in Salazar, but because of the fact that there are so many horses, uh, quarter horses who race in New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, there's an overabundance, and some good ones get lost in the shuffle. Yep. So they've come to New York now, where they, uh, where we do not have the, the big supply, so somebody who has got some ability is going to be able to go right up the ladder, and that's what Boak has done. He's earned... Uh, well over twenty thousand dollars this year which is a lot of money for a quarter horse because most of the tracks uh, greg they they uh, race for nickels and dimes having seen what they you know looking at their program and looking at what they've earned it definitely is uh, quite a bit more than the average horse here i mean there's no question about right, that right and he did get to go for ten thousand the other night so he added to that and uh, right and we have a we have a ten thousand feature every saturday night which is uh, something that i look forward to and uh, uh some good horses i uh I uh, like some of their names. We've got one that I enjoy calling Boog and Bug. <laughs> and uh, aha. aha. <laughs> well, Jack, uh, you know, looking at, the, looking at a track program at Suffolk Meadows, uh, being that the nature of most of the races are so short, a charted line really doesn't tell you too awful much except the horse's consistency. So therefore, in your estimation, what kind of importance does that speed rating hold on, on the charted line performances? Well, uh, to me, Greg, the main thing is on the uh, speed rating uh, is, of course, to get to know the horses and who that horse has raced against from week to week. And I would base a lot of my handicapping, the fact that maybe the horse didn't win, but he was racing with much better. Uh, and uh, I'll use a criterion of uh, uh, having raced against Boaca and finishing fifth or sixth against Boaca. Now there's no Boaca in the race. I give this horse a, a big figure. But you mentioned something, of, a very important word, consistency. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I've seen at Suffolk Meadows, uh, consistency, uh, these horses don't spring out of the clouds like they do at certain tracks that carry these little sulky wheels around with them. A horse is there. Uh, many of the horses are young, as we said, the two-year-olds, three-year-olds, maidens. And they will work themselves into a position from week to week where they look like they are ready to win. They don't finish way back and, and then, then the next week uh, uh, up front. Not as much so as at, in, in the other forms of racing that we're used to seeing. Right, absolutely. Okay, now, Jack, something that, that I think uh, is fairly noticeable, um, a lot of these races, because of the fact that they're so... Uh, short. I mean, some of these races at 220 yards, literally, uh, it is over in a whisper. So uh, what I've noticed is that horses coming out of the gate, horses that get out of the gate, are the horses that are finishing in the money. Right. You've got to get a good start, uh, Greg. The, the gate is the whole situation. Come, come from behinders are not glory horses in quarter horse racing. Uh, no. In fact, if uh, come from behind it does win, uh, you got your heart in your mouth. Okay. I wanted to, I wanted to show, illustrate a little bit about that. 
that whole gate thing. And, and another thing that I kind of noticed, I have, no, I have no prior experience with quarter horse racing visually to say that this is true at other tracks, but I noticed that a lot of the jocks, they seem to want to find a certain lane on that track. Like say they're coming from the five, they almost always duck a little inside. Is, is that true or am I just overestimating something? Well, I, uh, I really don't think, uh, so I've seen, uh, I agree with you, sometimes there are guys who look for the lanes, but usually when they bust out and they're going good, they'll uh, keep them uh, going on a straight path. Okay, we've got a, we've got a couple of races from uh, Sunday night's card here. Right. We just wanted to take a quick look at some, some gate things going on. We wanted to point out one horse who made, a nice, who made a nice move right from the start and just left the field for dead. So let's take a look at the first one. This was from the first race on the Sunday night card at Suffolk Meadows. One horse makes a very bold move right from the start. You'll see him cut right across. And he pretty much, uh, he pretty much set the standard there. The other horse followed him right to the inside and they left the field for dead. Right. And one thing, too, uh, Greg, that I should bring up so that the fans realize when they watch the simulcasting is that uh, we've adopted a policy at Suffolk Meadows that uh, uh, many of these owners do not have registered colors uh -huh. as they do in the thoroughbreds or the harness with the drivers. Uh, so we use a standard format that the jockey wears in every race uh, depending upon post position. So if you bet post positions, whether it be a for one or B for two, you know that the jockey will wear the same color, and that's an easy way to, to pick them out, uh, other than possibly betting on uh, a name or a hunch bet or whatever it is, but you can pick up the colors. I happen to uh, like the yellow. <laughs> the, uh, that's easy to pick out. It, it's a striking color coming from the outside, right. Okay. Uh, uh, I wanted to show another race here. Uh, Position-wise, now in that race right there, we saw kind of a crisscross as they came out of the gate. And I, I don't know if that's necessarily fairly typical of a lot of races. It was a fairly small field, and right. there was room. There was more room to move within the space toward the inside. Uh, in some races, uh, some horses may, be get, may, may get left in the gate. More so in this race. Watch the horse on the rail. This was the third race from Sunday night, and this is a, probably a real good example of how. Uh, Gate manners and gate behavior coming out can make a big difference. Watch the horse on the inside. He's out of there a whole step ahead of everybody, right from the rip, and he just ran away. What and you mentioned about, uh, Greg, the uh, gate situation, when, and when, they, when they take two steps out of the gate, quarter horse is right now in super high gear, yeah. uh, going better than 40 miles an hour. and. Uh, that's why I refer to them as the world's fastest racehorses, because there is n no horse alive uh, at that short a distance that can keep up with them. Yes, if they were to go around the turn like right. the, they do in harness or in the thoroughbreds, uh, they, they, would, they would tire. Okay. But at the uh, distance from 220 to 440 yards, uh, you'd probably have to use something mechanical to keep up with them. All right, Jack, now in that race, we want to show a, an ISO, a little uh, freeze frame, and show how this horse had the, fr the total jump on everybody coming out. And, and, and look to see what happens here. We'll arrow it off for you on the inside rail. So here's the closer look of the freeze frame on that sixth race start. This horse coming out has got really a, a full jump on everybody uh, right there. Now, it's a little dark on the inside, but you can see that his whole, uh, the whole carriage of his frame was ahead of everybody right, right from the rip. And that, that's, uh, that, that's where the advantage comes. Uh, not, not only getting away to that quick start, but also to avoid the problems, which I will mention and uh, talk about in a seminar tomorrow, is that uh, there's a lot of banging, there's a lot of bumping, there's a lot of squeezing that goes on, which uh, there's nothing you can do about. Yeah. Uh, so the horse who is able to free himself early uh, certainly has got an advantage because once you get bumped or squeezed or, or shut off, and it, it happens a lot of times, you're losing that valuable momentum which you cannot make up uh, back in sure. uh, uh, distance between 220 and 440 yards. We want to remind everybody our phone number is 3701315, so give us a call. We'll be on for uh, about another 20 minutes or so. Jack Lee is here to answer your questions, and uh, we'd be glad to help you out with uh, your uh, look into the world of quarter horse racing, and don't forget the seminars tomorrow at 11 and 6 at the Teletheater. In the meantime, Jack, uh, some of the jocks have impressed me with